Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Thanks so much for joining me. So I'm here to do another Sayonara Scraps video uh, for the Facebook group. Um, I'm doing mine every Monday and this is what I've got to work with this week. So uh, this time I want to try and use up all of these little strips and little pieces, the small pieces, of cardstock scraps that come left over from projects. So I've got a bunch of those. This is what I want to use completely today if I can. So I've got some neutral slash pinky tones. They're kind of all similar. I've got some, you know, green botanical type ones. I've got purple. And then I've just got some uh, bright pinks just in case I want to, to use those as well. I've also got some bases. So I've got, I've dived into my trash box. So I've got, you know, things like this leaflets folded up, a frame, piece of packaging and a paper bag and what we're going to do today is we're going to do some paper patchwork um, and this is inspired by three different people. We've got uh, Corey Damon from Corey Creating with Scraps, we've got Mandy from Sunflowers and Doors and we've got Tanya from Tatty Treasure. I will link them all down below. Basically it's a continuation of a patchwork cover I was making a while back inspired by Mandy specifically and it was using up these strips on top of those and then you sew around them like Franken paper but with cardstock. This time I want to cover these bases so what should we start with? Let's um, go with this one first. So this is just a piece of well essentially like a leaflet that came in the post and I've just folded it in two places so once here and once here and what this is going to make is a pocket. So we're going to have a pocket, the whole thing is going to be a pocket. We're going to have a pocket in here when we're finished and also a side pocket here. Now, it's not straight so I just want to double check that because I literally just grabbed a bunch of things and these were already folded in my stash. The only thing I do want to do is just cut it down in length because that's about six inches wide so I think we want to go cut the other way Justine <laughs> I think we want to go for more like we'll go with five and then it will fit just fine in a an altered file folder okay so that's what I've got Actually, I'll just um straighten that up I'm not setting the timer today <laughs> because I know a few of you had your Alexas go off but also some of this stuff I'm going to have to do um, the sewing off screen for example. Right, what should I do this in? So what you're going to see is you're going to see this part, this part and this part. I think I'll have it going this way. <clears throat> so I'm going to just dive in and I'm not inking around anything at all we are simply just going to use up these scraps to cover this packaging and hopefully it's clear what I'm making obviously I'm going to do the the scrap busting first so we're going to get all the all these scraps used um, and then oops, glue everywhere um, and then I will show you, you know, I'll do the sewing and then I can show you exactly what I've made. So I'm going to go with bits of purple and just want to not cut, not have to do too much cutting, but obviously I don't want to, to waste scraps. And I just want to put less glue on than that, <laughs> especially as we're sewing around. But yeah, I think this will be a fast way of getting these used up. So as I say, we're just going to do some patchworking. So I've picked bases. Um, I mean, you could do this with anything, but I've picked bases that for the most part, I'll be able to sew the scraps straight onto the piece. Because for me, I thought that would be, you know, easiest and what I'd feel most, most comfortable with. So let's have the bird on there and then we just need um, a small scrap to 
to go there. If I got anything, I'm sure I've got loads. It's a slightly different tone. Oh, that's not quite wide enough. <laughs> we'll find the right scrap. We will. We'll find it. Or I could just put the birds. Oh, it's going the wrong way, and that's why. So yeah, it'll be a little bit of fumbling around today for me to find <laughs> find the scraps I want to use. But I'm going to try to not fumble too much. What if I put that one there? And then something like that. I think that would look nice. Let's do that. As I say, with the stitching that we're going to do, it's going to look completely different again. And I'm just going to just grab a book page because I'm going to keep gluing things to my desk otherwise. Okay. So I'm just making sure, just bringing that up as far as it will go. That's it. So I hope you're all doing well and uh, wanted to say I'm excited so much for this challenge because I know a few of you have been you know sorting your scraps and you're already doing bits and bobs with your scraps making things and I know quite a lot of you are excited by this challenge and I am too um, I'm excited for you know what you're all gonna make because I do enjoy seeing all of that but gluing everything to itself um, but I'm also excited for, for what I'm making as well because I do love these random makes where you're not really sure what you're going to make and you know you just kind of go with the flow it is a lot of fun you know like the shop your trash type videos I do very much enjoy those so I definitely want to get all of these bases done today but I am going to keep an eye on the time because I don't want the video to be to be you know we're going to aim for the hour but you know if it can be shorter than that then that would be great <clears throat> just making sure i haven't got excess glue in random places there we go. okay that should be fine and then we've just got this piece here that we can see um so i think i've got stuff to cover that of course i have what have i got i've got some Dark purple. <clears throat> I can go with some more of the, the birds. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, let's do the birds again so it's in keeping. And then we just want something to fill up that space. Which, that's too much, isn't it? Um, what to go for? What about this colour? quite nice with the um I really want another piece of that but I've only got this piece left but I could make it go that away couldn't I you know if I do something like that and then we've just got this space which I could maybe do <clears throat> Something like that. Okay, right, so let's put this one down first. Or I think I want something a bit plainer. Yeah, let's go with that one. That'll do. So put some glue. So yeah, I mean, there's lots of ways that you can use up your, your scrapbook scraps. Um, for me, I'm just going to open that up. There we go. For me, I just wanted to use up these strips because I don't know about you, but they get on my nerves. <laughs> You know, we hold on to them and hold on to them, and uh, they just never seem to get used, do they? Um, but I'm getting better now at using my scraps as I make them, um, especially, you know, before I finish a project, I like to get things used. Well, that's pretty. It's got um, a bit of a border, border on it. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, use, I'll use that bit. <clears throat> okay, right. Go 
away and then we just want to cut off that excess. Oh, I'm all in a fumble. There we go. Please ignore the dog barking. He's, uh, he's in a strange mood this morning, just barking at everything. Okay, so that was my first piece. Obviously it's not finished. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the patchwork with the sewing machine. So you will see these pieces, you know, once I've sewn them, of course. But essentially what we're going to do is sew around all these individual pieces just to give it a, yeah, a patchwork, sewn, quilted kind of look, but using the paper. I just realised I dislodged that. That's the only trouble with using the clout, is it... Uh, moves um, and then this whole thing is going to be as I say a pocket and then we've got a side pocket and then in here is also going to be a pocket so um, I'll do the gluing with you as well but the reason I'm doing it this way is because then I can sew all these individual panels like so before it's glued into a pocket shape do you see what I mean I can obviously open it the whole way so I'm just going to put that to one side to dry there we go and then we can move on to the next part so I can do the, um, the sewing together. <clears throat> okay, right, how about we go with this frame? This should be fairly easy. So for this, I would quite like to use all of the, well, again, yes, using all of these tiny little strips up. So I think I'll go for about half an hour of doing this um, on video and then I'll pause and do the rest, you know, off screen because it's just much the same. I'll get all the, the sewing done and then of course you'll see, um, you'll see what they become. But at least then that keeps the video within, within an hour, which I think is, is fair, isn't it? So yeah, this is just a frame from a card making kit. It's actually got um, birds on the back, but that isn't quite to my style. So I thought, well, waste not, want not. I'll just turn it over and use the back of it. And then obviously this challenge came along and I thought, well, there you go. <laughs> that will do. So yeah, we should, should get all of these busted today. If I can... Well, I'm going to try anyway. <clears throat> so, yeah, similar to before with the just the normal paper scraps, the idea is still kind of the same where, you know, we're, um, we've got bases that we're just covering with our scraps, decorating them up kind of thing. That's just, I mean, that's just how I'm doing it. I mean, you can make pieces directly from the scraps, of course. Um... But, you know, I just felt like, well, at least here, um, straight away we have ephemera ready to go with, with really very little thought. And um, I thought that would be kind of the easiest thing, especially as we're kind of doing this mass make style in the sense of um, busting as many as we can in one go, you know. And then I think I'm just going to cut off a bit there. Should be able to just put that in like so and then that is that frame covered so I've done that one kind of in a neutral to neutral color palette because you know I don't know where these things are gonna go until I come to use them but at least uh, this way <clears throat> um, you know this can be used for for anything now so I do need to trim around all of these excess parts but I will do that off screen because I'm, I'm gonna leave that to dry for a moment before I start um, fussing with it. Right what's next? <clears throat> all right we'll go simple here we've just got this so I've got kind of this fun so this is going to be just a jumbo journal card so I've got this fun part at the top which I'm gonna cut out from the back piece but for now I think we can get away with just decorating the, the front of it thinking I want to do some botanicals for this so let's go with it 
So this, of course, you know, I'll be stitching through the journal card. Um, so I will need to cover the back of it, cover up the stitching, but I will need to use uh, something a bit heavier than just paper because otherwise you'll be writing over the stitching. So that's just one thing to bear in mind um, for this type of project, really. Just take that, cut it off. And you'll notice I'm not cutting, I'm trying not to cut my scraps down from what they currently are. I'm just using them as is. Again, keeping it easy and um, yeah, just, just going for it. <laughs> Busting those scraps as quickly as I can. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this one, yeah, I'm trying to go with, you know, greens and greens and browns for botanicals. I think I should have had a, a drink before coming to film. My throat's got on a little bit dry. But I don't know if it's, you know, the change in weather that sometimes causes me to get a bit of a dry, a dry throat. So thankfully I do have a drink with me. And a very squeaky chair. <laughs> so I apologise for that. And I also have to say an apology to those of you who I set off your devices that, that begin with A, you know, those home devices. Um, yeah, I, I set them off, didn't I? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I'm so sorry. I just did not think about it. You know, I, uh, I don't know why, because that's a silly thing not to think about. But yeah, so for any of you who I set off timers and all the rest of it, I am so sorry. I think actually I'll use that whole piece. And just put it right the way across. So I am covering up that um, that fun topper I just was just pointing to. Um, I'm doing that intentionally because I'm going to cut it from the back before I cover the back of it, back of the journal card. Just because for me that's the easiest way to do this is just to cover the whole thing like it was just anything, and then you know take it from there. I realise I should probably do, seeing as this is supposed to be patchwork, I should probably start going horizontal because I've done a lot vert uh, vertical, haven't I? I'm sorry if I seem a little bit quiet, the concentration is getting to me. And of course, you know, most of these will just be bases with which to decorate further. Um, I don't think I will do that today because I don't really know how I'm going to use these is the simple answer. I can, yes, I can. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just, uh, well, I just thought if we make the bases and then we can, we can decorate them up another time if, um, but yeah, I just need to decide. Well, I, really, I want to see what they look like sewn because, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying the challenge and I hope you're enjoying, you know, seeing what I'm doing as well. Um, I think I'll go, go like that with this one. I hope you can see okay. It's a very dull and overcast day today, so I'm probably casting all kinds of shadows, but oh well. Um, don't know whether to... I'll leave that as a focal point, I might pop that down somewhere in a minute. What else can I get in here? Um, well, that almost fits. What about this one? I can't believe that. I feel like I'm running out of scraps already. I didn't. I actually thought I was going to run out of bases before I run out of scraps, but um, getting through them, all of the green ones are almost gone. So if I. Ooh, where to put you? trying to put it there but I don't want to put it too close to that piece so if I go up there like that 
and then I've got this one which I could put kind of like that this is going to be like properly patchwork isn't it <clears throat> I hope I like them at the end of it <laughs> I hope I do that'll do and then just that little space there oh I said about this didn't I doesn't really go though. What about the other side? Oh yeah, we'll do the other side, that'll do. Okay, so that can go there. Okay, so again I'll cut around it when it's dry. But that's the basis of a journal card. Obviously, once it's sewn, it's going to look really different. So hopefully I like it. <laughs> that's that one. Right, what have we got next? Oh, let's do this one. So this is a, um, like a leaflet flyer thing that I got in the mail. And I folded one side, like one corner in to make this sort of pocket. And this side, I folded it like that. Now, originally, it was going to be an over-the-page uh, pocket. I've decided not to do that for these. I don't want anything folded um, for these projects, just because the scrapbooking paper is going to be quite... Um, what's the word? Heavy. Um, so I would actually rather... Um, lost my glue. There we go. I would rather just have, you know, single pieces, especially with me sewing them as well. Anyway, so I'm going to fold and glue that little corner over just to strengthen this piece, strengthen the pocket. Not that it really needs it because we're going to cover it with uh, cardstock scraps, but you know, like that. And then that is going to be a nice tall slanty pocket. And of course, we could always add gusset to them if we want. Right, let's see about using up these um, these purple scraps. Let's see if we can. Well, I've cut that a little bit short, but never mind. I think this project would be easier with neutral scraps you know if you had a lot of like the same paper pad you know Tim Holtz probably would be a good one um but of course I've got all of these scraps from old previous projects and I just want to get them used so I thought you know otherwise I'm just going to sit on them for forever and ever <laughs> So I'll make this the last one that I do uh, on the video and then I will do my other bases off screen. I'm just going to go until all of these scraps are used um, and then I will <laughs> sew them all and then we can you know, glue up the pockets that won't glue in and yeah, just basically do some finishing off. And that should be you know, a good length video I would say. Oh, um, okay, let's put you there. I don't know why. <laughs> I just really like this, this beautiful purple roses on that one. Very nice. <clears throat> there we go. And it's handy, you know, not having to do any cutting. And you'll notice I'm not doing any inking either. And the simple reason is because uh, where we're going to do the sewing... Uh, nothing needs to be inked because the sewing is going to cover anything that we would have inked. Oh, we could use that as our little, um, yes, I'll wait until last. That is going to be my pocket edge piece. That's what we're going to do with that. And we could maybe have this, this down there. Yep, why not? But yeah, all of these just offcuts from trimming down card stocks and all the rest of it. I think this is going to be a good use for that, for these. Right, I've cut that piece a little bit short somehow. <laughs> Never mind. 
Um, I'll just probably cut that bit off the pocket. Just see how it looks when I've finished. Um, what do we have? Oh, I've used that one. Just got a couple of small bits, haven't I? Um, I'm just sort of looking to see what would go with it, really. I could bring in some some dark, yeah, why not? As I say, these are all from different paper pads. I, I rarely... Whoop! Too much glue on that one. I, uh, I rarely um, use just one paper pad because I get bored. So... Um, so all of the scraps that I end up with are just completely random. <laughs> Um, but that's, you know, fine, fine for me. I think these are going to look really quirky when I'm finished. I hope quirky is a good thing. <laughs> um, I'm just going to move that one over. There we go. And yeah, a great way for... Use, use them up quickly and also, you know, cover these bases. Um, I've got this one. I could just pop that in. It looks a bit boxy, doesn't it? So that's going to go there. So I just want something behind that. Sorry, decisions, decisions. <laughs> I could just do another of that. Yeah, let's do that. And as I say, it's only the background. This can be decorated up further, can't they? Like so. And then last but not least, she says, <laughs> just want to trim this down a sec. Just going to trim oops, trim along here just so that I can see where my pocket where my pocket is. So I'm using you know an old cheapy pair of scissors. They're quite blunt, so I can't cut into my pockets and things. Um, but also I don't I'm not bothered if they get a little bit gluey. Okay, so we have that looking good. And then we can <clears throat> just go along there. Okay, let's do that. So as I say, yep, I'll make that the last piece. Hey, not bad, just close to, to half an hour for the video. And, oh, I'm just going to move that over actually. Oh, yes, I want it more. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just positioning it. There we go. I think I'll have it there. And then I will just cut the pocket down slightly. That's what I think I'm going to do. Just uh, mopping up the glue blobs. There, I think I've got them. So now I've just got a tiniest little little bit that I missed. Um, but that's okay. I can um, do something with that. I can... I mean, I could wait until I decorate it. Unless I've got like a tiny little piece that I could just slip in there. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. There we go. And then I need to cut this down. <clears throat> okay, so before I get, before I pause the video, I'm just going to cut these down. Like so. Got lots of scraps to throw away now. It's just little bits. So I'm not going to keep keep all of that. And then I'm going to just cut along here. There we go. All right. So that is a patchwork pocket. Yep. I think I'm happy. As I say, it is just the background. 
So that's ready for sewing. So let me just pop it over out of the way. There's just a little bit there to cut off. Okay, so I'm gonna hit pause for now. Um, I have a couple more bases left to do, and then um, I'll come back and, well, I'll do the sewing, and then I'll come back and, and finish the video and show you how they look. And if I feel like things need decorating, we might do it today. I'm not quite sure. I'll have a think about how I feel. So anyway, I'll hit pause for now, and I shall be right back with you. So I just thought I would pause my sewing just to give a reality check. If you're going to be doing Franken paper, expect a hairy, stringy mess. I don't know if you can see that, it's probably not picking it up on video very very much, but lots of strings. Expect it to be, you know, hairy and not, uh, not super neat like this one. The reason being is because what I do when I do my franken is I pull all of the stitches, um, the loose threads, to the back and then I tie a knot so that all of that, you know, extra hairs and stuff is at the back, not at the front. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a mission, but I just thought I would just do a reality check because, you know, if you've never done this before, this is what this is what it looks like. The sewing is almost finished. <laughs> okay, so I was just going to show you them. These are the two. Uh, these are two of the pockets that I made. Uh, here's this one. Um, so those are completely finished. So I've obviously done the zigzag stitching around the the Franken things, so you can see hopefully that detail. And then all of these pieces, I'm doing a straight stitch the whole way around the outside just to finish it off. So we have got a tall pocket. We've got two normal sized pockets. So those are finished, apart from obviously they need to be decorated. Um, but I'm not doing that today, <laughs> I've decided. Um, because yeah, I've been here a little while. So this one is also finished apart from decorating. So just to show you. This one is going to go over a page like so, and we're going to have a side tuck on one side, and then you turn your page over and you've got either a flip out or a side tuck. I haven't quite decided yet. This could be a writing spot, or it could be stuck down on the page for a big side tuck. So that is that one. Uh, so yeah, apart from decorating, that one is also finished. Um. I wanted to show you these. So this was the uh, tall collage that we did. Now I wasn't a fan of how it looked all as one piece. I thought it was a little bit too bitty, you know, with these. Um, I used quite a lot of small strips for these, didn't I? So uh, before I sewed them, I decided to just slip them in half. So now I've got a simple journal card. It wants backing. Once I've done that, I can then do the stitching around the outside. So. Again, aside from decorating, we're almost there. This one, I have no idea what this is going to be now. I can't decide whether it's a pocket or a journal card because where I've cut that little tab out, I feel like it should be a tiny journal card or something, but I also kind of like it as a pocket. So I'm not sure. I will see. <laughs> so that's that one. And what's next? Um, I'll show you that in a second. We'll do that in a second. Uh, we've got the frame, so here I just did zigzag just to join the pieces together and this one I was thinking I will sew it straight onto a piece of vellum. So for this one I'm going to sew a straight stitch around the inside of the frame and again around the outside and that is going to be a pretty vellum frame. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. There we go. And I just wanted to finish this one off with you. So this is the, uh, I don't know what to call it, leaflet thing that I basically did like some kind of concertina fold. This one can now be uh, glued together as a pocket. So I have made a couple of changes from how I was gonna have it originally, I think. So originally I was gonna have the whole thing be a pocket. So glue the whole piece down. So essentially this back piece be a pocket on the page. 
then I was going to glue this section to give you a pocket just here so that would be two pockets and then I was going to have a side tuck but in actual fact I realised that I also have this section here which would look a bit strange I think um, so instead I'm going to make a side tuck here a side tuck here and then the whole thing can be a pocket so <clears throat> Going to, I'm using the, the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. It's probably overkill, but it's just because of the sewing. I feel like this will um, stick a bit better than anything else, or at least not better, but quicker, you know, because I am, I am recording the video after all. So glue that down. So we've got a side pocket just there, side tuck. This one really isn't going to need too much um, extra decoration, really, I don't think. Because, you know, we've got those little birds on the front there kind of thing. So, anyway. And then I'm going to glue this one on two sides as well. Oops. To give me a second side tuck. And this is the kind of thing that I will do with envelopes, junk mail, bits of paper whatever I can get my hands on, where I'll just sit folding things. Almost, sometimes it's as soon as I get it through the door. Like in this case, I just started folding it whilst I was opening the mail. Um, that's the kind of fun you can have with pieces like this, you know, junk mail and envelopes, because if you just fold them and twist and turn them and stick them together and glue them and what have you, before you know it, you have some really interesting um, ephemera pieces. So that's just my little reminder <laughs> to, yeah, just have a bit of a play and you can make some really fun things. Okay, so side tuck, side tuck, and then the whole thing is now a pocket. So that's that one. And last but not least, <clears throat> I had this paper bag. So I wanted to use this for this purpose as well. So what I did was I folded the top of the paper bag inwards and glued it down just to reinforce that a bit and then so this is the, the the bottom of the paper bag so it was like this and I just folded it up to give me this pocket now because I haven't glued this yet I was able to sew these two pieces directly onto the pocket so that's what I did the back panel however if I were to have sewn this directly onto the paper bag well obviously I would have closed the paper bag um, it wouldn't have been a pocket anymore. So for this one, I just sewed the, the Franken zigzag stitch down the pieces to join them together. And this, I'm going to glue it onto the paper bag and then I'm gonna sew all the way around the outside um, like I have been doing with the others with the straight, with the straight stitch. <clears throat> um, and then that will be uh, this piece completely finished. I mean, the stitching around the outside isn't necessary. It's just, I feel like it will um, just finish it off a bit. Seeing as we're doing the sewing in the middle, you know, I feel like, yeah, I would want the whole thing to be sewn. So I'm just going to slip that into place as straightly as I can. As straightly, <laughs> that's not a word, is it? Okay. Got a little bit of an overhang, but that's fine. I can chop pieces off before I do my sewing. Okay. Yep. So I've just got a little bit of an overhang. What did I do with my scissors whilst I clicked pause? I don't know, so I'll just use these. It's only the tiniest bit, but it's there. I can see it, so let's get rid of it. So the, I wanted to throw this in because if you're going to... Um, if you're going to do this on top of things that you want to keep as pockets, maybe you were going to do this on top of envelopes or something, um, then you would, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Yeah, you would need to sew separate panels and then glue them on um, in order to keep, you know, uh, this, these pockets open and things. Okay, I'm fine with that. So I'm going to glue this up and then this one will be ready to go back to the sewing machine. Um, I think that was the last piece. 
so yeah I mean I'm not finished <laughs> in terms of um, you know I still need to decorate them and also some of them want the final bits of sewing but I tell you what I got through those strips of scraps you know I really am a wally sometimes so I was just saying about the paper bag and I went off to go do the final bits of stitching and I realised that of course I wanted to stitch across the top part of the paper bag but I can't stitch the pocket closed so it's okay I rectified it I just had to pull back uh, the top panel so I could stitch across there and then I sewed up the sides so that's fine I rectified it but just bear in mind if you're going to do a paper bag or an envelope you might want to do all of your sewing uh, before gluing it onto the paper bag or envelope but you know it's fine these things are you know we learn don't we anyway so those are the pieces I have got the frame I just did the stitching so really this is just something to be well all of these pieces are just things that can be bases you know we've got I'll just do a reminder we've got a frame <laughs> we have got a paper bag pocket so pocket in the front and in the actual paper bag we have got a uh, the whole this whole thing will be a pocket on the page and we have got a side tuck here and also here so that's that one we've got a journal card just once backing we've got the over the page like double pocket type side tuck thing which I just was showing you and then of course we've got the the pockets and the tall pocket and a surprise mystery piece of ephemera who knows what this is going to be will it be a journal card will it be a pocket will it be a plane i have no idea um if you have any ideas of what this looks like to you please let me know in the comments i'd love to know what is this <laughs> what did i make but you know what i used up my scraps so that is the pieces that i was coming on to do so that's good i'm really happy i made more than i expected more than an hour's worth of crafting but that's fine um you know at the end of the day that hour timer wasn't you have to do an hour and that's it that's all you've got the idea of the hour was to set aside that time to sit down and do the scrap busting and then of course whilst you're there you probably would want to be longer than an hour in some cases anyway or if not an hour is still a good amount of time to get stuff done so um these are the pieces i have made for this week um as I say, they, they want decorating and finishing. They are just simply scrap busted bases. <laughs> Let's call them that. Um, but, but there is also something else that I want to show you. So I'm going to tack on a little PS. And then just to finish off, um, I had some strips left over, not many, but I had some. And I decided to punch some circles from them. Now, I've just been trying an idea... I can't remember where I saw it, but I saw someone do this, where they folded some circles and then punched, you know, did a hole punch, and they create little, almost like whale tail type tabs. So I thought we would, well, I would um, just sit here and fold some of these. Some of these circles will just go into my, um, my circle drawer, but yeah, I thought maybe this would, I would give this a go. So the only thing is that you kind of want the, oh goodness, kind of want the circle punching to be, you know, symmetrical-ish. I don't know if it's going to work out for all of them, but you know, I might as well. Really, what else am I going to do with these things? So I thought I would just pop this on the end of the video. Just, uh, yeah, it might suit some of you. I know we don't all have the, the whale tail punch. I mean, I have a die that does the the whale tail shape, but, um, you know, to be honest, I'm getting to the point where I'm using my die machine less and less because it's a bit of a, like with punches, you can just do it then and there. I feel with the die machine, because I have to get it out and everything, I feel like, you know, you have to almost make a conscious effort that you're going to do a load of die cuts in kind of like one foul swoop I guess that's kind of how it's gone for me really but you know but I mean this is working out just fine I won't do this with all of them 
as I say. But um, yeah, I just thought I would tack this on. And that is officially all of my scraps that I had on my desk. <laughs> Not all of my cardstock scraps, just so that we're clear. I still have plenty. <laughs> but it is officially made a dent. I'm going to call it making a dent. So, yeah, I'm really happy today. Well, I'm happy every day, but, you know, not every day. Most days. <laughs> Most days. Anyway, but, uh, you know, anyway, I just thought I would tack this on. So, I am going to leave it there. I'm going to call that a video. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the pieces that you've seen today. I hope you like them. And good luck for the challenge, for those of you taking part. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more of your fabulous makes. I'm seeing some great ideas already, so so that's brilliant. And I'm making a right mess of this one. <laughs> it's becoming less and less like a whale tail with every punch that I do. So I'm just going to chuck that one. We can throw some things away, can't we? Anyway, I will leave it there. I will say goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.